Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover in London, and I'm here with Vineet and Michael. And Vineet, exascale computing is something that um, I, d I don't actually know a whole lot about, but um, we've got some photonics here that, that seems to play an important role. Can you talk a little bit about why exascale is important? Yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Jake. Uh, really, the exascale space is the next sort of frontier for massively parallel computations. So think of these very complex problems like human genomics in the life sciences space, where we're trying to sequence genes, we're trying to do predictive medicine, or things like weather forecasting and simulation, or even molecular chemistry or scientific calculations. These are very, very complex calculations. They often require you know, weeks and months to run on traditional computers, and even some of the state-of-the-art supercomputers. What we are trying to do is we're trying to dramatically shrink the time it takes to solve these very complex problems. And that's really where the exascale comes in, where today we are in the, in the, the petaflop range, right? So uh, traditionally, you know, uh, traditional computing is teraflops. We talk about the massive, the best supercomputers in the world being petaflops. And then exaflops is sort of the next you know, frontier where we're going. And that whole area is called exascale computing. And so if, if I was to, if you were to sum that up, how, how much time does that save getting to exascale? So really, uh, it's going to save you many orders of magnitude, right, in terms of solving these problems. So what used to take you uh, months and weeks are going to be solved in like days and minutes. Okay. That's, that's the that's a, promise. So that's a, that right? is a, a very uh, significant increase. That is a promise. And, and the bigger piece here is as we go into the future, one of the big things is the exploding amount of data, right? So a lot of times, just computation and flops are good, but in today's world, we've got to incorporate all these data-intensive compute workloads, right? Because big data and unstructured data is the fastest growing. So how do you do these computations and incorporate all of this massive amounts of data? And more importantly, how do you move these amounts of data, right? Because I'll give you an example. If you think of a traditional supercomputer today, we deliver about 250 teraflops per rack as a rough number, right? 250, 300 teraflops, give or take. The reality is when you start getting to exascale, right, you need four to get to a petaflop. Now you think of thousand of those, you're talking 4,000 racks, right? Just imagine one exascale computer is about 4,000 racks. So I need a warehouse full of racks is what you're saying. Exactly, so, so the, the, the whole thing is, think of the massive amount of scale, and the fundamental idea is the traditional architecture just won't get you there, right? Because of the, of the power required, the cooling required, the space required, the sheer latency, right, in terms of doing those massive com computations and moving the data around. So you have a fundamentally rethink your architecture. You've got to think about how you can shrink things down and dramatically make it simpler, uh, increase your capacity, reduce your footprint in terms of space and power, and really deliver that massive speed, and more importantly, move those data around. And that's why we talk about the memory-centric computing, where we're actually taking the compute to where the data is created, right, and make that much more seamless compared to today's architecture is much more monolithic and siloed and just doesn't scale. All right, and so that sounds like that's where I should turn to Michael and have him kind of break down how, how Photonic is going to change that. One of the design requirements that we had for the machine was to, to bring Photonics inside of the computer. A lot of folks are bringing Photonics to the computer, but for the, for the, the power savings, the latency uh, reductions and ability to reach processor to memory, we needed to bring it inside. And so what we've developed is this module here. And on this module right here, we have uh, standard CMOS silicon, lasers and photo detectors underneath this connector uh, with signals coming out on uh, this ribbon, this fiber ribbon. So we're able to, um, able to transmit four independent channels down each of the fibers running at 25 gigabits per second. That gives us 100 gigabits per second across um, each one of these uh, 12 fibers. 100 gigabits per second times 12. Yes. And and could you actually grab the the model you have back here? Yeah. So this is um, this is a, an an easy way to show the equivalence of what we can transmit through this this fiber optic ribbon versus uh, standard uh, Ethernet cable. So so this is the, kind of the equivalent amount of Ethernet cable that would be required. Is that kind of the comparison? It's a good it's a good example. And then if you think about one of the biggest challenges is power reduction. So the way that we get the power reduction is through integration. We're integrating both the electrical and the laser and the, and the photodiodes into a very small module that requires much less power to use. It requires much less space, which allows you to do more with the cooling and the airflow. And so it's, it's a perfect match for what's needed for exascale computing. So now when we're talking about, you, you want to shrink 4,000 
racks down to, to one rack was kind of what uh, Vineeth was proposing. It's going to be more than one rack. <laughs> more than one rack. But, what, oh, okay, regardless. So uh, a few racks. Are, are those racks going to use the same amount of power as a standard rack that would be in, in the market today or less or? Right, so the goal is, um, this power is one of the biggest challenges in the data center because we're, we're creating more and more dense um, power consuming uh, devices and, uh, and servers and storage and everything. And so we need to lower the power consumption across the board. And so there's a, 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 a practical limit to what you can provide in a, in a rack and cool. You're saying that even the, in, this, in this new model using photonics, you'd probably try to have the same level of, or right. equivalent from level of power consumption. From, per rack. Per rack, per rack. And then, and, then, and then get much more capacity in the rack space. Yes, it's absolutely right.